Hello, I'm at Super Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Who oh, praise God. A lot, a lot to share with you. Can we call for that daily bread? Father, join me now with faith in your heart, knowing, like I told you yesterday, that God loves you. I am a... Leguzaba. How can you hear things like this and go and sleep? It should give you sleepless nights. I'm telling you, this should give you sleepless nights. The times, the, 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 the times I saw the scriptures, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. How can I sleep? Is this talking about me? Is this talking about me? That God loves me the same way he loves Jesus. No, he couldn't, he couldn't be talking about me. I, I've shared this story many, many times. Many years ago, a dear friend of mine, you know, she came to me and she said, hey, there's a scripture I'm looking for. I said, well, what scripture is that? He said, the scripture that says, as he is, so are we in this world. I thought about it. I like, ah, no, nah, there's no scripture like that. She said, no. He said, I've seen it before, but I can't remember where I saw it. I said, in the Bible, I said, yes. No, maybe, maybe you're misunderstanding. Say no, I saw it. And then she came to me because I had this strong, exhaustive concordance. So we kept arguing. We kept, and then I'm like, okay, let's check it out. If it's there, we'll find it. And then we we start searching. And then we saw the scripture in John chapter 4. First John. I was like, I read it over and over and over and over. Because when we're arguing, I said, God will not make that kind of mistake to say something like that. I said, she said, no, it's there. When I saw it, you know how you, you I mean, is this true? Oh, dear Lord Jesus. There are things we see in scripture that will make you cry all night. That was one of it. I sat down. After she left, I sat down. And I wept. Why was I weeping? I never knew he loved us this much. Oh, nobody ever told me. I never saw it. And I wept because I like, wow, what love. As he is. Do you know what you're talking about? How, how, can, how can God make this kind of mistake? But it, it, it can be a mistake. It means it's true. If it's true, how come we're not amplifying it? How come we're not telling it everywhere? As he is, so are we. Not when we go to heaven. In this world. Hi, come on. As he is, as he is. Ah. And then later, I found this. I didn't find this when I was studying the Bible. I heard a preacher share it many years ago. I heard it. I said, nah. Now, I, I could relate with it because I've already received as he is. So are we in this one? Yeah, you understand that? I, I, I could, I could, I could. My heart could easily accept this. But I took my Bible and I looked at it, that the world may know that you have loved them. He wasn't telling us this message. He was talking to his father and he was praying, Lord, make the world know. He couldn't have been lying. So meaning God loves me exactly the way he loved or he loves Jesus. I am, my life must be different. I'm telling you, tell you what I began to say to myself. I can't be ordinary. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't live life ordinary. I I look at Jesus, he was never stranded in his life. Never stranded. Then, oh, why wasn't he stranded? His father always showed up. He always spoke about his father. The same father he's talking about. You remember when he rose from the dead? He said to Mary Magdalene, he said, go tell my disciples, I am going to present myself to my father and your father. Whoa. I'm telling you all this to tell you, Jesus said, we should ask our father for daily bread. 
Oh, New Testament preachers will say, we don't need to ask. Like, hey, come on now. He said, we should ask. Ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given. Ask and it shall be given. Why don't you simply obey? Ask. If you believe God loves you exactly the way he loves Jesus, if you believe that as he is, that's exactly how you are today, join me right now as we pray and believe for a miracle. Say, Father, I know you love me. Lord, I join my faith with Jesus and I declare, let the world know that you have loved me as you love Jesus. Say, Lord, therefore, I ask for my daily bread today. <laughs> I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. See the reason why you must receive it? Because the world's got to know. Your colleagues that are not saved, they've got to know. They've all got to look at you and say, see. You know, you know, sometimes when, when people are talking about you and they're talking about how things are difficult, say, but, but this person now, he did it. Ah, leave that one. Just see, when we're talking about people, don't mention that one. Why? He's on another level. See, that one is God's special child. Yes. Praise God. When unbelievers begin to talk about you like that, it, it means you are really making impact. Praise God. Let nobody say, hey, he's rich because he's a pastor. No. You don't get it. Oh, he is rich because he's a businessman. No. Hey, I've looked at that guy's life. I've looked at that lady's life. There is something about God. That always takes care of her. Like, yeah. Why do you say so? But, but she's walking. He said, no, it's not a job. I, I, I know it's not a job. He said, that's why she's never afraid when they're talking about uh, maybe people who lose them. She's never afraid. There is so, I thought she had a rich father. But when I got to know her better, I knew it was not from her father. I thought, but she, you know, I thought, you know, you see, but this is my conclusion. God loves this girl. God loves this man. Oh yeah, that's when you know your life is making an impact. That's when you know your life is making an impression. Praise God. And that's what he's called us to do. I told you yesterday, the whole Bible is a story, one story. And it's the story about God and his family. How God expresses his love to his family. That's the story about the Bible. And in it, trust me, there's nothing like New Testament. There's nothing like Old Testament. It's a journey of love and care. It's a journey of love and care. Hey, you know what? God promised Abraham. I think I should read this. Let's let's do. Oh, do we have time for this? Nakusa Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's let's begin. Galatians, 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 chapter three. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. I want you to look at something here. I want you to look at something. Now you remember God. I, I told you it's a story of, the, of, of God and his family. And now God created Adam. And Adam messed up with God. And then eventually God destroyed the earth and saved Noah and his family. And then he blessed Noah. But then Noah didn't carry on the blessing, the way God expected him to carry on the blessing. So God found a man named Abraham. His name was Abraham. So God promised Abraham to bless him. But he came in an instruction. Leave your father's house. See, the blessing of God always comes with an instruction. Understand this about God. It is the same yesterday, it's the same today, it's the same forever. Every time God says anything about the blessing, it comes with an instruction. If you cannot keep the instruction. Now, John tells us that the instruction, which is called his commandments, they are not grievous. When John says his commandments are not grievous, he is not talking about the Ten Commandments. That's not, you see, because you hear commandments, oh, your whole head is ten. You attend to it. Anytime you're, you're reading the Bible, anytime you hear the word commandment, you attend to it. See? Because that's what your mind was changed to think. But no, commandment simply means every instruction 
that is given to you. When God tells you don't go out today, it's a commandment. Stay in the house, obey him. See that now? So John said his commandments are not grievous, meaning what he's going to tell you to do, it's not so hard. It's not grievous. You know why it's not grievous? Because you have to act in faith to do it. See that now? So God said to Abraham, come out of your house because I want to bless you. I'll make you great and I'll make you a blessing. I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those, anyone who curses you. And then God promised him, in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And God spoke to him that way. And let me tell you the truth. If Abraham didn't obey that instruction to leave his father's house and start going in the direction that God commanded him to go to, there is no way God was going to fulfill his word that he spoke to him. Yeah, because because the command came with an instruction. I'm telling you this. So sometimes, you know, people don't understand this. So maybe you're believing God for something and then you're praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. You take a fast and then you pray and pray and then the prophecy comes. and say, son, that thing which you are looking for, I have given it to you. I have given it to you. I have given it to you. I shall bring it to you. It shall come by free cause. Now, if that's all you hear, You might stay a while before you see that thing come to pass. Really? Yeah. You might stay a while. Learn this and learn and be helped. If all you receive is, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Now, God is not lying to you. But you see, most times when the time of the fulfillment of a promise comes, there is always an instruction. So you see, God says, get out of your family, of your father's house, and go to a land I will show you. Now, that required a physical action. See that now? It required a physical action. So the Bible says, faith without works is dead so what does it mean faith without works is dead whenever faith comes there must be an instruction that will spark up a walk a physical action from you so god says step out of your father's house so abraham began to move and everybody said why are you moving because god said i should move and that was the work of his faith see that now so he he was moving and while he was moving, lord where are we going to go right okay sir Go left. Okay, now you see that place? Stay here. I'm going to give you this place. Thank you, sir. When? See that now? <laughs> but God said, I will give you this place. And God began to bless him. And began to bless him. Now then, we come to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, Now, <clears throat> now to Abraham, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Oh, you need to follow me. I'm going to give you. Well, let's start here. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll enter into the real teaching tomorrow because of time. It says, now to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. When God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, God says, Look, come out of your father's house. I will bless you. And there is a part of the blessing that he said, I will bless your seed. I will bless you and I will bless your seed. Let's quickly look at that. Genesis chapter 12. From verse 1. Now the Lord have said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, 
I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you I will, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that was the promise God made to Abraham. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up today. Praise God. I'm going to in this, I'm going into the stitching tomorrow, so don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. You don't want to miss this. Father, I bless you for everyone listening and watching right now. Be blessed today. Receive your daily bread. Receive that thing that you have desired from the Lord. Let it come today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.